Hello Beach Class, we're going to read the final part of our story for this week. So yesterday we left it when Lila had written a note and left it for Lao Chand saying she was probably she was going to go off and find the royal sofa. So let's come to carry on reading. When Lao Chand came back and found her note, he read it with horror. Oh, Lila, Lila, you don't know what you're doing, he cried and ran out into the alley. Have you seen Lila? He asked the fried prawn seller. She went off in that direction about half an hour ago. She had a bundle on her back, added the boutique painter. Looked as if she were going on a journey. Lao Chand hurried after her at once, but he was an old man with a weak heart and he couldn't run fast and the streets were crowded. Rickshaw drivers jostled with bullock carts. A caravan of silk traders was pushing its way through the market. And in the Grand Boulevard, a procession, procession was going past. The crowd was so thick that Lao Chand couldn't move any further. The reason for all the excitement was that the white elephant was being led to his new owner. Chulak was leading Hamlet at the head of the procession and with them came musicians playing bamboo flutes and banging teak drums and dancers swaying and snapping their fingernails and a troop of servants with tape measures ready to measure Hamlet's new home for the silk curtains and velvet carpets the owner would have to buy. Flags flapped and banners waved in the sunlight and the white elephant shone like a snowy mountain. Lao Chan forced his way through the crowd to Chulak's side. <sighs> Did you tell Lila about Razvani and the royal sofa? He painted. Of course, said Chulak. You should have told her yourself. Why? Because she's gone, you wretch. She's gone off by herself to Mount Meripai and she doesn't know the rest of the secret. <gasps> is there more then? Of course there is, said Lao Chan, struggling to keep up. No can go into the fire fiend's grotto without protection she needs a flask of magic water from the goddess of the emerald lake otherwise she'll perish in the flames oh chulak what have you done and then we're going to finish it there oh so lila has gone off to get the royal sulfur which is in Mount Meripite, but she hasn't got the magic water to protect her. What is going to happen? So activity five, we've already listened. So this part of the novel explains how the father and friend, so Lao Chand and Chulak, react to the main character, which is Lila's actions. It also contains a detailed description of the streets and procession, procession, which we call the setting. So I would like you to write five sentences about the characters and five sentences about the setting. So reread all those details about what those lively streets were like at the time. All right, good luck, Beach Class.